Hello friends and welcome back to a new reading vlog. I am cat sitting again. <laughs> I always start videos when I'm cat sitting. I just, I love this background. Anyway, I want to give you guys an update on the book that I'm halfway through. Yes, we're starting this reading vlog being halfway through a fucking book because why wouldn't we? But I am reading The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson and I'm fucking obsessed. I'm obsessed. I literally stayed up till 5am and I read like 211 pages. And I'm further than that now. I'm veering on the 300 page mark because I have read a lot this morning. But the gist of this book, as you can tell by the title, we have a missing woman who reappears. So the case is, is that a woman called Rachel Price goes missing and she leaves her baby, her two-year-old baby, in the car. And then the baby is found by a person who actually becomes her homeroom teacher many years later, um, who is also a colleague of Zima. So, we're in the future now. Belle is 18. And she is dealing with the reappearance of her mother who she believed abandoned her and I feel like this book does really well with the theme of mother issues and abandonment I think it's done in a very realistic way with the way that Belle reacts and her belief system based on the childhood that she had uh, obviously I can only speak for myself but it's it's quite accurate for me. She's one of those people that believes that everyone everyone's going to leave me eventually. So I might as well just like push them away, not get close to them. She kind of has that stance on it. And I think it's a very interesting way. Another thing that I've really loved about this book, I'm going to try and not give spoilers and talk really vaguely. But another thing I love about this book is how realistic it is. Because when... Rachel does reappear the reactions that people are having are not the reactions that they think they'd have which I find that very realistic because quite often we think if this happened to me I would react this way or I would feel this way but when that thing actually happens we react in such a different way it's almost like when I've experienced this thing in my mind it's already happened so I've already reacted one way but when I've actually experienced it outwardly I'm reacting a different way it's almost like experiencing it twice and I thought it was very realistic the way that the dad reacted because he always said oh I just want to like scoop her up into my arms and tell her I love her and tell her I miss her but his reaction was kind of very w withdrawn he was very distant. I am literally stroking a cat. She, she's absolutely beautiful. Um, he was very withdrawn. Belle was very much like, this woman abandoned me. I don't want to get too close to her. And she starts to believe that the story that Rachel told isn't what actually happened. She's kind of seeing this woman as like a, a con artist, which is... You know, it's very interesting and it's exciting. This book is so exciting. I forgot to mention also that before this all goes down, Belle and her family have agreed to being on this documentary about Rachel and how her disappearance has affected her family. Uh, so also that's building up to a romance with her and this camera guy and I'm absolutely loving the banter between them. Something that Holly Jackson does well is the main girl and the sidekick having a relationship and the banter and the wit and the chemistry between them. I'm just fucking loving them so much. Like this book isn't even a romance and typically in a thriller, obviously unless it's Holly Jackson, I'm not very much interested in a romantic subplot. But when it comes to Holly Jackson, yes I am. She really knows how how to do that she knows how to hit the spot so with the place I'm at now with the book it's getting very high impact very 
very just oh it's twisted it's turning miffy it's twisting and turning and i'm in love i'm in love with you <laughs> um yeah miffy is the cat that i look after i look after her very regularly she's currently laying in the sun listening to me talk about books she she likes to poop her nose against my hand so that's why i'm down here um but yeah, what I can say so far is that I feel like, depending on the ending of this book, it's going to be a 5 star. It's going to at least be a 4.5, but I'm hoping it's a 5 star. Because like, we can just, we can just ignore 5 survive. Did you just try and hit me with your paw? Did you try to attack me? <laughs> we'll ignore 5 survive and just focus on a good girl's guide to murder and this Rachel Price book which you know Rachel as a character like she's kind of bland she's kind of she's putting herself forward as this very in innocent timid person she's reminding me a lot of Amber from the the last Miss Parish which I was trying to read for a blog this month but I had to put it down because Amber was starting to annoy me <laughs> She does remind me a lot of her. And as we know, Amber is a bitch I'm a still your life, girly. So that puts Rachel in a similar category. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm just really enjoying this book. This video clip did not have to be six minutes long. So I'm gonna I'm gonna skedaddle. I'm gonna get out of here, but I will update you guys with my thoughts in a little while. <laughs> headache in the back of my skull but I literally can't put this book down so I'm just kind of like forcing myself through it suffering through it but we have got to the plot twist and my god did it twist I I'm gonna be honest with this book I didn't really have any theories but I did not think of that I did not think of that I did not think of that who who done it I did not think of that of like how it all came together so perfectly and i was just i was shocked i was like <gasps> and there's also this part in the book where they're like rifling through some um books and it mentions a lot of books that i have read like the night circus which is one of my favorite books and i was like yes shout out to the night circus yes like holly jackson is a night circus girly i'm just claiming it she is a night circus girly it is mentioned in the book i was like <gasps> And I think that was a really nice way of like bringing some realism into this story because it made it feel so real. Like A Good Girl's Guide to Murder feels so real. It feels like a place that I know because the town that it's set in, that fictional town, is actually very close to me. So it was so easy for me to kind of picture everything. And then with this one, having... Like, it is set in the US, which it doesn't super feel that way. It, it does feel a bit weird for Holly Jackson to be writing in the US. But the element of having these well-known book titles that exist in our world made it feel more real. And I liked that. I really liked that. So I'm going to just continue reading this because it's wild. It is now wrapping up. I have like 40 pages left so I'm gonna go enjoy that and I will give you my full update at the end holy fucking shit holy fucking shit holy fucking shit holy fucking shit right this is my final update because I have just finished five fucking stars five fucking stars like five fucking stars go read this book now like the end we got to the plot twist and the end is just kind of like wrapping it up hello just wrapping it up the aftermath like just that kind of this is where it ends this is how it all comes together resolution part i'm fucking in like guys 
I don't even know how to give cohesive thoughts on this book because it's just so like fucking wild i take back what i said about rachel she is a fucking badass okay like i love i love a fucking badass character and she like my opinion just changed on her specifically badass bitch badass bitch i support her i support her i support her <laughs> I think this book was really well written um typically I am so used to having like mixed media elements in Holly Jackson's book but I don't feel like this one particularly needed it so I wasn't kind of <laughs> the cat's trying to knock over my phone I didn't feel like I needed it with this one because it just stood out on its own Whereas when I think about A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, if you took out the like mixed media element, I don't think it would have worked for me as well. Like the mixed media element really fucking made that book. But for this one, it just kind of worked without it. Um, what I will say is that I enjoyed the twist. I didn't predict it at all. I think it was a fucking brilliant it was brilliantly done like i need everyone to read this i don't even know how to give you good i don't even know how to give you a good update in fact i'm i feel like i'm just gonna leave it at i fucking enjoyed it also a <laughs> little bit of a side update i've been watching a lot of horror movies recently and tell me why i thought heathers was just a musical and it wasn't like a movie with winona Ryder. found it on um itvx and I was like, wait, that's a movie. <laughs> and I'm going to be watching that. I started it last night, but I was like too tired. So I'm going to finish that. And I'll probably give you an update on how I feel about Heathers. I'm also going to feed this little kitty because she's the best cat in the world. I have started another book. And never in my life did I think I would say yeehaw cowboy romances for me. Yes, you can probably guess what I'm reading. I have started the Chestnut Springs series by Elsie Silva. I did not think that I would ever give a single fuck about cowboys and bull riding. Like, that's how you know it's a good book if you just never cared about a topic before and then a book makes you go, do you know what? <laughs> I care about this. So basically, if you don't know, it is about a girl called Summer who is tasked with looking after an actual asshole of a cowboy because he's like messed up his image and she's the daughter of his agent. So she's basically tasked with a babysitting him and they kind of get off on the wrong foot. Like he just does not like her. He refers to her as a bull buster. But he wants her to bust his balls. No, but like he does. Like at the part I'm at, he's starting to kind of see her in a light that is less annoying and more attractive. And she's like doing this caretaking role looking after him because he just, he's so stubborn. He's so stubborn. He has to like manage his pain because he's 32 and people are like, hey, you need to stop bull riding. You're getting too old for this. And he's not listening. So she's kind of just like taking care of him, which I didn't. The role being reversed of the caretaker is just so relatable because that was me. And I'm kind of like, girl, yes. And he is all over it. Like, he is all in for her taking care of him. Like, I'm sure at some point he's going to fake an injury just so he can have her attention in that way. But yeah, what pulled me into this book was there's one bed and they don't like each other. And I was like, oh no, there's one bed. And he's so totally gonna wake up with his arm wrapped around her because men love to do that subconsciously. And it's just gonna be a beautiful moment. I haven't got to that part yet. They are at their first bull riding competition at the part that I'm at and he has been injured and she's taking care of him. And I'm fucking loving it. I'm loving the dynamic between them. I'm like, yeehaw, yeehaw. I keep saying yeehaw. I've gone around the house today being like, yeehaw, he -he -he. cowboy romance. <laughs> I never thought this would be me, but I am. I'm here. I'm yeehawing. Yeehaw. Right, I've decided I'm now a buckle bunny. That's my career. 
I want to ride cowboys for a living. Yeehaw. <laughs> I just got to the part where he's got so fucking jealous because she's gone out with this other guy. And there was like some kind of like miscommunication. She saw something, but it wasn't what she thought it was. So she goes out with this other guy. And then she finds out about this thing where if you put on that cowboy hat, that means you ride the cowboy. So when they go back to the hotel, she puts on his cowboy hat and she's like, mate, let's go. Oh. This book is absolutely fucking killing me. He keeps calling her princess. And I think that's my thing. I feel like that's my thing. Like I, princess, baby girl, not to like expose myself here, but I'm into it. I love a man written by a woman. I love a man written by a woman. Guys, there was this just fucking quote where he's just said to her, oh, you think I'm just like sweeping around with everyone, but I haven't looked at anybody since the first day I saw you. What? What? Sorry. I want to be a girl in the Chestnut Springs series. In fact, I want to be Summer and I want to be called Princess. I want to be called princess and I want a guy to be all cocky and tease me but he's like really a gentleman and just I want rat <laughs> oh my god oh my god and then he literally goes and that day you literally demanded me to become obsessed with you sir sorry yeehaw I can't I actually can't deal like all my updates are just going to be me, like, being obsessed with quotes. So, you have to deal with that. Okay, so I have now finished Flawless by Elsie Silva. And I am sitting on a four-star rating. At first I thought it was going to be five stars and it started to drag a little bit. But overall, I absolutely fucking loved it. And I cannot wait to read Kate's book like I'm on this discord and everyone's talking about the guys and who's the best and Kate is coming up quite a lot and I do enjoy a dad of course I do I do enjoy a dad so I am excited for that but to give you my thoughts on this book loved the chemistry between Rhett and Summer. I thought it was done very, very well. In fact, I really like the way that this book was written. It really showcases how funny I feel like Elsie Silver is as a person. Like, when it comes to romance authors, when the writing's humorous, I can't help but not separate the author from the character. Like, it just truly feels like Oh, Elsie is funny as a person. And if all of her books are like this, then I'm so down. I want to be a girl in the Chestnut Springs universe. Because I'm just loving these men. And I just love the way that Rhett speaks to Elsie. Because not only does he give her words of affirmation, which is... Oh, that's a good love language. He also backs it up with actions and we love a man that can match the action with the words. Like, I just loved, I just loved the way he treated her. Maybe not at the beginning because he was a bit of a dick, but like after that, loved it. He calls her princess. He calls her princess. <laughs> and I realised that like, that's the thing for me. I want to be someone's princess. I want someone to talk to me and about me the way that Rhett talks about and to Summer. Yeah. Also, the smart. Let's talk about the smart. The sex scenes. I think they were brilliant. Like, I was like, oh. I mean, there was the use of the word cunt, which is one of my favourite words. But when it's used in a smart setting, I'm a bit like, oh, I don't like that. But the rest of it, like, it was hot. It was hot, it was steamy, it gave me everything that I was looking for. So on the smart front, great. Um, what else can I say? 
another thing I really liked about this was the relationship between Summer and her dad. Even though she refers to him as Kip, his name, I just, as someone who grew up on Gilmore Girls, I do love a familial relationship, like the parental friend dynamic. And obviously it's some, sometimes that can be a bit messy and a bit toxic. But I think in this book it's done really well and Summer obviously very much values her dad and as someone who was dadless I feel like this kind of healed part of me this is like a relationship that I always wanted and didn't have so to be able to read about like a good one in a book just like healed something in me that's just a little bit of personal law just like you didn't need that that's that's a bit too much information <laughs> But I did enjoy that aspect of the book. Like, I feel I feel that the relationships in this book are really good. I'm really excited to explore Willa as a character. She stuck out to me. Like, the way that her and Summer would interact through text. You can tell that Willa has a really great personality. And I feel like, just from that, she would be just a great match for Cade. Because he's so serious. And she's so, like fun and bubbly and I think that he may need that presence in his life so I'm excited for that I'm just I had a really great experience reading this book and I've said time and time again that I'm not like the biggest romance girly but I feel like when it comes to maybe I am now but when it comes to this world I think I'm just gonna be sucked in further and further so that concludes this reading vlog i i will be vlogging like right after this i'm gonna be starting a new vlog um i feel like i'm leaning towards reading heartless but it might end up being icebreaker by hannah grace i'm kind of just like in a, a romance mood right now that's a little spoiler that's for what's to come may not be what actually happens but we will see when we get there so i will see you then